Hey YouTube, Tom Houston, Tom Houston Photography here, and in this video I will be reviewing my SB900 Speedlight. So this is the big daddy of Nikon Speedlights. It um, has been replaced by the SB910, however that was just due to um, this flash shutting down completely if it overheats, whereas the SB910 is designed that can still take um, a limited amount of lower um, power flashes instead of just completely shutting down when it overheats. But other than that, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing. This flash takes um, four AA batteries. I use rechargeable ones so I can again cycle just through my batteries so that I always have four batteries that are charged for each of my flashes and the four batteries in them. It can be bounced off the ceiling and then shot forwards. It can spin backwards on both sides, which is useful sometimes, but doesn't matter too much. Um, it is very well built. It's made in Japan. Um, good build quality. Um, the user interface is very nice, very easy to use. Uh, I like the on and off switch. It's very easy to cycle through all the options. Um, one of my favorite features is that you can actually um, control it to go straight to remote or master, which is nice, um, instead of dialing through a whole bunch of settings like in my other flash. So this is really easy to use. It has a zoom range of 17 millimeters all the way up to 200 is also very handy. Um, it has a um, diffuser panel which brings it down to 14 millimeters which is nice and wide. As well it has a bounce card built into it so that lets you tilt it at roughly a 45 degree angle and bounce light off there instead of shooting it directly into people's faces which is always nice. The SB900 comes with its own diffuser, which looks a little something like that. It also comes with a lovely case that I do keep because it has all of its gels and the gel um, holder is in the bottom of it, which is nice to keep all those things together. So, great bag. Usually with lenses, I keep them in the box. However, that bag I have actually used and usually keep my flash in. So, overall, I highly recommend this flash. If you're just starting out, it might be a lot of flash for you. So, I would recommend getting a SB600 or SB700. However, if you know you're going to be doing lots of flash and you need something to do basically everything you could possibly want, this is the flash for you. Um, I have used it for many, many shoots. I have only used it, um, I have only benched it once when I was doing a shot at a waterfall. I was doing portraits and I had to set up my flash on a light stand in a river. So I brought my SB600 instead of this one because if my SB600 went for a swim, I wouldn't be as upset as if this went for a swim. So I just brought that one because it was lighter and I don't worry as much about it as I do with this one because it is more expensive. So this is a very powerful flash. It has a ton of features. I only shoot in either the manual mode or the TTL mode, depending on what I'm doing. Um, there's tons of other settings and tons of other things it does. However, I only use them for a very specific thing, which is usually portraits and or doing events. So I only really need it to do so much. Um, so if you're really into flashes and use all those crazy settings, this has all of them and I highly recommend this. Um, flash, if you're well into using flashes, however, if you don't know much about flashes, I would recommend starting at a simpler model that is less expensive. So I will toss up some photos I have taken with this flash. Um, some of them might have the SB600 as a fill. 
However, um, I don't often just use this flash now. I usually have my SB600 as just a fill. However, the main light will always be this, so I would toss up a couple photos. I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, please feel feel free to toss them below, and I'll be more than ha ha <laughs> more than happy to help out. So, with that, I'm going to go, and I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.